it is what it is you know it's really just about people understanding the industry and knowing that some people you don't ask them to freestyle they come out and they mm -hmm. do interviews and they just talk about their hits and then just you know do what you do good but don't try to freestyle when it you, you start looking like a clown because <laughs> and then and it's really, i can't even blame him i, I blame <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, I'm a my man, I'm a, you know, don't, 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 let, don't let Davido send his goons out here, you know? The hottest thing Blaze. in the world right now. Blaze. This is The Blaze Podcast. Boom, boom, boom. What episode is this? What episode is this? Episode 8, we back at it. The Bless, Blaze man. Podcast. Good to see you, man. Good to see you, Still my G. Living. Every single Thursday, What's Good Networks, Buddha Blaze TV, and of course, AfriPods. You know it. How was your weekend? Weekend was uh, intense. For real. Tell I, me about it. I got into a lot. I um, uh, st started off my weekend Thursday night with Industry Night. Yeah. They were celebrating um, uh, Necessary Noise. Word. You know, actually, one of the first albums I ever bought with my own money. Those guys. Young well, was the necessary noise album. Yeah, with Bomb Z and yeah, still was still with Bomb Z. Stepped out, you know. Well, now you meant if they're there at the actual event. Did they all come? Nah, I, I just seen Wiry. So what was the celebration? I thought they were gonna be on stage. On stage? That's what I thought. Nah, it was it was the the young acts were gonna do tributes. Oh, it was just of their records. Word, oh yeah, words. Yeah. yeah, I didn't get it. We we, yeah. we came early. We watched uh, what her name was Ruby. Yeah, Ru. Dope, by yeah. We watched her. She was really. I think dope. she. We played on the podcast before, right? Yeah. Yeah. She's dope. She's really dope. Yeah. Like she really held it down. Who else did we see? We saw what's the dude. I'm a Damuya That was. I messed name. with him. Yeah. 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 yeah nice, I messed nice. with him. Step. Yeah. Uh, uh, what's kid's name? Dez and uh, Dez and Unique killed Unique, it. Unique man, big up yeah. to Unique. I like that MC man. He yeah. really needs to come back. He. I felt like he's really underrated. Oh, he is. Unique. He is. He's dope. Unique. If you're out there, send your music. We'll. Mm -hmm. we'll We'll critique it on this on this podcast, man. Yes, sir. So after that, I went to see um, Mikel Amin, man. Oh, yeah. You're at the Muse, huh? Yo. I met Matt, actually, this past week as well. Yeah, he's, he's a cool dude. It, he's doing it. Muse. Muse uh -huh. is killing it. Yeah. So Mikel Amin, doing a good job, man. He's out there. UK artist that's coming to Kenya, just mm -hmm. really just blending in. He's out here at the studio working really, really, really hard. Okay. So he had a show. So we we had to get all the way to Westlands to watch that. It was really energetic, really nice. And uh, Red Cap Red Acapella, mm -hmm. this Kenyan band, they were backing him yeah, up. Dope. Really cool, traditional music, yeah. taking it fusion. They're putting that whole rumba notes in it. Really are you nice. familiar with uh, Are you familiar with One Two Five? One Two Five, the a group called One Two Five. Yeah. yeah. So they have a song with Red Acapella. For real? Yeah, where they actually sampled. Um, uh, what was it? It's a all. Oh, it's a Zilizo Pendo record. Like one of the old classic Tabu. Ones. Tabu. Right? Yeah, man. I heard that joint. Ah, yeah. Really nice. Red Acapella, dope. I like those guys. Friday, I went to my cousin's graduation, so you know that, that was good to experience. Yeah. And um, we were there at um, KICC. Uh, she graduated for hairdressing at Ashley's. Nice. So, yeah, I, was, I was proud of her. Big you know, up, man. checked you know, out, and then uh, took. Welcome her, to the game. Yeah. Now it's time for her to grind. Yeah. Took her to have a drink. Uh, Get that some money. Lunch later. And then I ended up hanging out with um, uh, Shoma Josie and and Shapo nice. and Barack she must be that man night. Cool. Oh man, she's she's just too cool. Yeah. Shouts out to Shoma Josie, man. Big up, big up. And what happened mm -hmm. after that? Uh, Friday. Yeah. No. What happened when you were hanging out with her? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta tell us the whole story, man. The whole story. Uh, yeah, man. We was kicking it at uh, at Jueke, actually. So she came out. Uh, we were hanging out. Uh, drinks, shisha. Then all of a sudden, 5-0 wow. just raid the spot. Wow. So 5-0 raid the spot. Um, so anybody who was who had shisha pots on their table. What? Wow, they still were, arresting were people for, for taking in. shisha? Yeah. So we were actually in the big house with Shoma Josie on wow. Friday night. <laughs> You're a legend, man. You always find yourself where the police are. <laughs> Yo, somebody tell us, yo, Jinx. <laughs> What's up with Jinx, man? All is around the cops and all is around the I don't know, man. I don't know, you. man. I look like a suspect, it's I guess. It's the hair, man. Yo, <laughs> watchers, man. You guys want him to uh, shave his hair? So sh <laughs> the hair is attracting a lot of cops. What do you think, man? Not but you attention. guys were safe. They it was good, go. yeah. We were in there for like an hour or two. Uh, wow. The club the club had to, you know. Come bail you all Oh, out. yeah. Because it was a, a bunch of guys. So unfortunate. Plus. So unfortunate. You know, over the weekend though, also Africa Nouveau went yes. down. Yes, head out there. Yeah. It was really nice. Africa Nouveau was cool. I was there Saturday <clears throat> night. I got to watch the likes of um, was it Bantu? 
the DJ and uh, Shoma Josie. Okay. I caught Hot the Band. Nice. Um, I caught the Kaya Collective. I caught quite a few performances because I was there. I was there early um, Saturday. Nice. So it was dope. Um, although I, you know, taking in taking in what Africa Nouveau was trying to do, I felt like so many other not only Kenyans but Africans are supposed to experience this. Yeah. Because it's it's just a dope ass narrative, bro. You know, just having a narrative as Africans and and being futuristic about our ideas. Yeah, I mean, how they put it together was really good. Real nice. We you know, we we came there in the afternoon. Really mm -hmm. enjoyed ourselves. Mm -hmm. We got to see Batuk. Spoke Matambo was there. Okay, I didn't even know Spoke was in the country. Mm -hmm. If you guys know who Spoke is, Spoke is like a legendary yeah, South really. African producer DJ. Mm -hmm. So he was playing with this band called Batuk. But that's Spoke's yeah. type of vibe. Mm -hmm. Like I've been to gigs where Spoke has a mask. Yeah, or he would just come out Nobody of nowhere. Knows he's he's always been. I mean, you know, he's a legend. He's one he of is. the when they talk about um, Koito, mm -hmm. he's one of the guys that they really you know try to push. But he's always been very anti-pop, mm -hmm. very anti-media, mm -hmm. very. I mean, not intense but he just stays under the rider. He's yeah. kind of like a, a blinky bill of all sorts. Big up to Spoke Matambo. He is in Nairobi, and that was so crazy to 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 look at this because yeah. we heard Batuk, so we're thinking I've never heard of these guys, but they killed it. They right, killed it. Dope, Big dope. up to Africa Nouveau Modoni doing your thing, and that's yeah. the way to go. Um, listen, you the, you guys are the originators of this whole festival thing. Don't lose out to the others keep going let's keep it moving man it's we'll gonna catch on man you. yeah because what's happening there is special and i, th I think uh, it's just a, a matter of time before people really understand that there's so much value in art yes you know it's not only for entertainment yeah it was very holistic like going through the maze yeah watching the you know the installations they had sculptures nice like, it was it was just a very holistic experience bro that's really that dope. is priceless yeah really if you ask me it was so. good catching up with all the people out mm -hmm. there something else really cool happened mm -hmm. uh the batuk singer uh matenga okay oh my god she was like while she was performing mm -hmm. some dude slaps a girl and she sees it yeah. she stopped the performance she like stop the performance stop the why are you slapping a woman in public yeah. like why do guys do that why would you slap a woman slap a friend whether it's a girlfriend or whatever even if she did something to you why would you slap would you, her you in public physical? so she like, got do really you slap your boys when when you know when yeah. you get into an argument yeah. or whatever like, it's so relax. sad like we got to stop that stuff like mm -hmm. people think that there's some big campaign needs to happen but it needs to happen within ourselves mm -hmm. it don't matter what a woman does to you don't slap it don't matter what anybody does to you don't slap anybody just anyhow like, you know come yeah. on there's, there's we're human beings we're intelligent there's ways you can communicate you know you can lash out at somebody without hitting them oh yeah of course friday we had the funeral for uh, mm -hmm. kantai yeah uh, we gave him a really good send-off and uh, it was really cool like you know a lot of artists came out there was a, the hip-hop community was there mm -hmm. um Giuliani was there. Sharon did a song for him. It was a really somber I think I seen Long John. afternoon. It was really cool like, out there in Gong. Mm -hmm. So we went out there. We just like hang out and, and just enjoyed and, and just basically gave him a befitting send off, man. Mm -hmm. It was really good. And, and a lot of speeches from different people. Yeah. His family was really gracious. It was really, you know, it was something. Yeah. You know, it's my first funeral to actually go and, and see the grave go down and, and, and the, the casket go down and actually fill up the grave. It was, it was something. Something, you know and you know a lot of people came out and Kantai was a very prominent figure in our hip-hop community for and sure he inspired a lot of people and mm -hmm. a lot of people were sending condolences you know from from LA from Norway from London it was just one of those um, one of those moments man so Friday was really um, touching yeah uh, touching you. day for me and uh, we just want to thank uh, all those people who contributed to Kantai's send-off, all mm -hmm. the people that contributed to the planning of his funeral, uh, the music community that came out in numbers to just be there and then and, and just give him a befitting yeah. uh, send-off. It was really, it was really touching. It I was feel really, you. really touching. And uh, R.I.P. Kantai, man. And uh, we'll be holding um, a tribute concert on... Uh, 22nd March at the Muse, Nairobi Rhapsody. So see you over there. Mm -hmm. uh, MC Sharon will be launching an album, G E M S. And uh, we'll do a tribute, you know, just have some DJs come out, play his tunes, some artists if you want to perform on his behalf and mm -hmm. just to remember him. Come out to everybody that had memories that couldn't make it to the, to the, uh, to the funeral. Be there, man. That would be a best uh, 22nd you know, March place at the Muse, Nairobi Rhapsody.
Yeah, let's yeah. celebrate the legend. Yeah, but it was really sad waking up Sunday morning to hear um, to hear the crash. Ethiopian Airlines, man, had yeah. crashed and no survivors, man. Yeah. All the people, what they say, 149 passengers on um, flight uh, ET302 from Addis Ababa to Nairobi, man. Rest in peace to all the people that, that um, were on that flight. Yeah. And we just want to ask the families of all these people to stay strong in this time of adversity and it, it's really sad man. i mean because that's a flight any one of us could have been in i mean mm -hmm. we do gigs in addis yeah. you know my wife uses that flight when she's flying in from south africa i use that flight to go to you know i fly between uh nairobi addis to jamaica or new york so um Rest in peace to the families, and we just send in condolences to the families and stay strong. We are together, and uh, listen. I don't know what else to say, man. Because hopefully, we also just get some some clarity. Yeah, of what happened. What exactly happened with the plane? Yeah, he it, it lost contact with the cell tower like six minutes into the flight. Wow, you know? what's going on with these flights? Because I'm hearing a lot of like Boeing's are going mm -hmm. down. Like, is it is it because a lot of um, African airlines are buying old planes, or what's really going on? They need to figure it out. They yeah, I, I I read something off. Um, I think Flight Radar. It's a Swedish based um, monitor. Yeah, they said um it had an unstable vertical speed. And they knew this. I don't know what. Now I think they were they were looking back at it. And they, they said something like a uh, un unstable vertical speed. I think that's when that's on takeoff. Yeah. I would assume. But somebody mentioned that this flight had problems before. That they had mm -hmm. actually told the pilot that this flight had um, technical issues before, mm -hmm. and they just didn't look into it. You know. Hey man, I mean, if if that's the case, someone needs to be put to account. For real, man. It's not. Uh, it's not about Ethiopian Airlines. I think it's happening all over the world. Mm -hmm. I, the other day, I think we heard uh, Turkish Airlines had a really scary landing into mm -hmm. New York, mm -hmm. and it's also a Boeing. So somebody needs to do something. And this is why monopolies are really bad. So Boeing is one of the biggest um, aircraft creators in the world, right? Oh, so yeah. if all these flights are, are are being disabled and, and there's there's lots of accidents, somebody needs to look into why there's only one monopoly for making airplanes, you know? Yeah. Also in this weekend, uh, Kenya Samantha Mugatia mm -hmm. got the best actress in her role in Rafiki at Fespaco 2019. Fespaco. Yeah. Fespaco is a big uh, arts festival that happens in Burkina Faso. It's been going on. It's 50 years okay. down the line they've been okay. doing it. All right. You know? That's dope. So, That's prestigious. Yeah. Big up to Onori and uh, Samantha for, for snagging that award. Even when they're trying to ban y'all, yeah. you're still out here taking W. Keep rocking it. Hey, Keep rocking it. You, you know? That, that weekend they lifted the, the, the ban yeah. so people can go watch it for Oscar eligibility. It was a full house, right? Full house. Yeah. Full house. You can't stop what people want to see mm -mm. you know Shouts out to Wanori. for sure wanori samantha thanks for like lifting kenya up man yeah, yeah man uh what else happened uh somebody tried to put a statue like a a lion statue on some roundabout the, gov <laughs> the government of nairobi tried to put a statue yo did you see that statue dude yo who approved that <laughs> who approved that statue on a roundabout man that i mean statue. If, if they were trolling us then props to you yeah yeah props but if someone was actually like you know what this it looked go like here? a joke oh yeah yeah it looked like this the lion was trying to run away the lion was like this is a bad idea even the lion was scared <laughs> yeah, yeah. even the lion was like mm -mm, i told home. him this is not a good idea yeah we're the home gotta, to so many sculptors hey man you know you gotta put it, it has to look real this gachanja kaigo <laughs> go to him he'll give you a nice lion mm -hmm. there's so many sculptors we have so many artists that could have what was the explanation i don't know i just i was just like this is so whack man like on the main <laughs> highway yeah you're gonna put like we live among lions like if That's you're gonna I'm do saying. a statue of a lion give yeah, it has it to respect right. man don't play around with people's emotion <laughs> and then what sunday morning they try to sneak in another lion that mm -hmm. looked even worse oh really though oh my lord these lions look like they are like no dude i'm not trying to be on this statue the lion looked like it was about to run i didn't see the second one the yo, second one was bad too the lion was like no nah, dude this is not mm -mm 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 -mm. same saying it no chief i'm not voting <laughs> Yo, yeah, that was man. bad. Yo, Real crazy. Like, like, like the, 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 the county government or whoever approved this um, plan, 
That's why you need to be engaging with the artist community. That's it. Engage don't with do, us. Yeah, don't do things in isolation. Yeah, Just man. Don't do it. There's so many be, consultants. Be more inclusive. Come yo. talk to the artists. There's yeah. so many sculptors. You yeah. can go to Corona Trust. You can go to mm. Go Down Art Center. Mm-hmm. There's so many sculptors that you actually would do this for nothing. Yeah. But because you guys think it's all about showing off and showing who's big and showing who did what, yeah, instead a, of engaging the art, that's it. It's, it's all about, yeah, yeah, I know this guy, so yeah. I'm trying to finesse him in. That's it. Now, just be more inclusive Nairobi City Council stop putting up crazy looking lions that was bad you're making our lions laugh at us <laughs> it's not cool man it's, it's cool. whack yo not what a cool fail man what a fail oh yeah that's a rat on the highway <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean so yeah so what's going on with um, I heard Davido is um, trying to freestyle again I need to hear this freestyle yeah we heard I that to it. we heard that he was on um DJ Wookie's show. First of all, Davido doesn't really have dope lyrics, I don't think. Yeah, I mean, he's got dope lyrics as far as making music. He makes his hits. He's a hit maker, but he's not a freestyle artist. But uh, does, is the music lyrically, like, to the, the sound? To the people that listen to it, to the people that consume it's more that melody kind of music. driven, yeah, man. I mean, it's, it's more just... melody, but it's dance music. Mm-hmm. He does dance music. Yeah. He does pop dance, African pop dance music. Mm-hmm. You cannot fail him on that. Yeah. That's his territory. Yeah, but when it comes to freestyle at Wu Kid show, your manager was at the Wu Kid shuffle on the Wu. Like you know how many people watch the Wu Kid show? I mean, oh my that's lord, that's crazy, bro. Yeah, look He's at this. He's about to lose credibility. So I want to see this. Yeah, I need to see this. Where the whiskey? Where the whiskey? Bruh! Where the whiskey? David, don't know! Me a whiskey! Hey. <laughs> Dude, that's, that's what I'm right saying, there. bro. His style of music is not from a lyrical standpoint. I mean, that's, what, that's what he does in his music. But that music doesn't have freestyles. You can't exactly. freestyle that kind of music. Yeah. Like if you're going on a Wo- DJ Wookiee show, just I don't run on freestyle. Yeah. Just be like, hey, listen, man, that's not my... Cat, I'm not, exactly. You know, call mod nine or mm-hmm. call you know to me from mm-hmm. you know from the from the V or call like you know um, you know call one of these rappers. That we have dope rap. freestyle call rappers yeah. if you have to. Yeah, but come on, yo, your management dog. <laughs> the, <laughs> that, that was a bad look. Bad look. But yeah. you know what? I mean, it is what it is. You know, it's really just about people understanding the industry and knowing that some people you don't ask them to freestyle. They come out and they mm-hmm. do interviews and they just talk about their hits. And then just, you know, do what you do good. But don't try to freestyle when it, you, you start looking like a clown because... DJ Wookie. And then, and it's Lisa. really, I can't even blame nah, nah, him. Nah, nah. I, I blame... DJ Wookie. I want Davido. My man. I'm a... You know, don't, 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 let, don't let Davido send his goons out here. You know? People uh, get that's really my touchy. guy. Davido's really my touchy. guy. Big up, Davido. Keep Relax. making your hits. <laughs> freestyling ain't your thing, you know? Yeah. Did you catch the other thing where Mr. Easy was talking about Nairobi is the easiest place to make a hundred thousand a hundred thousand dollars for a show i knew that was a hogwash and uh and i i do feel like people took that one line that's it and spun it out of context yeah i mean because because what he what he was trying to say is we're very receptive market yeah, yeah. which is good which is good yeah. but also the reason for that is the issue we've been talking about play Kenya music as an industry as an industry we don't work well together but the people love the music so much that since you can package and and repurpose and yeah. and really present your own um your own Culture, art acts yeah, from yeah. the market well the people are going to buy into whatever else that's already popping Made, yeah uh, out there if you bring it here yeah they're going to take it in i wonder why that is the case with kenya because mm-hmm. yes Granted, number one, it's very great that Kenyans listen to all types of music. Mm-hmm. They're very, you know, if you go to other markets, you go to South Africa, all they play is Kwaito. Yeah. You go to Nigeria, all they play is Afrobeat. Mm-hmm. Now, Roby has a unique standpoint where we listen to everything. We listen to hip hop, we listen to reggae. All these reggae artists, you don't see them going to Nigeria. Mm-hmm. You don't see them going to Tanzania. Oh, yeah. Reggae I mean, is They big might go here. to South Africa here and there, but they always in Kenya. Yeah. Kenya is like the second home of J- a Jamaican artists. Oh, yeah. Listen, bro. Yeah. Here's what I'll say. And, and actually, you are very active in. In the music business at this time yeah remember the caliph ogopa era yeah when Gange was popping one of the best Boomba was popping music, yeah you Not know for hip-hop but for you know for the other yeah thing. exactly so at that point majority of airplay was being given to kenya's true yes. or false true, true both on radio kenya's and tv yeah all right yeah this is what i think shifted 
and you can tell me if I'm wrong. Yeah. But this is what I think shifted. Since the industry wasn't set up well structurally, I don't think these guys made enough money for continuity. Word. I feel like the artists who were at the, the top during the golden, this is what I call the golden era of, of Kenyan, Kenyan music, music yeah. didn't do good enough business to build structures You're right. that will present the next the artist next level the next wave yes so it's like all these artists made it to the top and then stayed on top but didn't give opportunity for the next, next guy yeah so now when the next guys came in they had to start from scratch they didn't get any guidance yeah they weren't lifted up uh, one of the few guys that you can you can give credit to lift guys up is nonini yeah because he brought he brought p unit yeah you feel me yeah so then there was a little bit of continuity uh, you can you can talk about Code Red and how we brought Matrix and how Matrix plugged in Cora and yeah. the ca so there's some continuity. But as an industry, we failed. It was all like in little little it's segmented. Parties. It wasn't like all yeah. in one. Yeah. Well, you know that's all, what happened. All that money going to MCSK at the height of Kenyan music consumption was it reinvested in the game? No. Do we even have music concert halls? No. I, I had Saudi Soul on the show last week. We had a very good conversation. Yeah. Because they're the only group. That have gone on a nationwide tour. Yeah, and, and they put and up Victoria their own. Kimani, you know. Oh yeah, she did. Victoria, After she did yeah, she did. Tour. She, she did. did she did. Tour. Yeah, I'll give Not her that. Successful, but she did. She did. It, she, did. Yeah. she she put her money where her mouth is, yeah. and she did an African tour. Oh yeah, she yeah. Did. Shouts she, out to. She did Kisi. She mm -hmm. did. I think she did Kisumu. Yeah. She did Mombasa. She did Nairobi. Yeah. Shouts out to Victoria Kimani. Yeah. Uh, you know, and it's tough. It's not easy. You yeah, know, putting this money together to be able to—I mean, a, a show in one place can cost as much as a million shillings. That's what they were saying now, yeah. and that co that cost can go down up to seventy percent only if all these major cities in the country just had concert halls. Yeah, that's it. MCSK. Just a fucking concert hall. You open. If you look at the numbers, it's the least they, they can do. What, they collect what six hundred million shillings a year every year, and bro. And then you got an artist like Chris Kantai dying, and he has nothing. Like there's nothing. What's their he can operation collect. cost? I don't really. How know many what's people going do on. they have in their office? I, I mean, I mean, what what can it be? This conversation will be had in full at another time. I'm really like, yeah, I just came out of a funeral. Yeah. Um. So I'm really, really hurt that. You know, we can't even go claim anything for him. Like, mm -hmm. you know, his mom's like sitting over there and we can't even go and call somebody MCSK and say, hey, listen, do you guys have any funeral support mm -hmm. or anything? This is an artist that just wasn't an artist. Yeah. He gave Kenya hits. hits. He inspired many other people that came after him. Mm -hmm. And still, he couldn't even nothing, bro. We have to do better as an industry, bro. If one media station right now came out and said, hey, listen, we want all these situations that are happening to Kenyan musicians to stop. We can't have Poxy Pressure die, no money. We can't have Kantai die, no money. All these artists die every year and mm -hmm. there's really nothing to show for it. Yeah. And then when you try to speak out, People try to block you. People mm -hmm. say, oh, you're part of a CMO. I don't even mm -hmm. know what CMO means. <laughs> we, we need to do better as an industry. So for I guess sure. we'll, we'll, we're going to have a big, big, big battle trying yeah. to follow up with MCSK and yeah. what happened to his funds. And, and we're just appealing to MCSK to cooperate or whatever, whatever bodies out there, whoever's mm -hmm. watching, that can go out and streamline this thing so we can make it mm -hmm. conducive for people to create art, man. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's a fact. So last week... Prominent rapper from South Africa came out and called out men for domestic violence. And this is, was after um, Bebs Wodumo, mm -hmm. a South African major star. If you've heard of her, she's a uh, queen of Kom. Mm -hmm. Kom is like, you know, the most popular yeah. South African vibe that's going on in music right now. I'm sure okay. you've danced to it in the club. So she posted an uh, Instagram video where she was being hit by her boyfriend. And it really sent ripples across South Africa yeah. and people were talking about it. And remember, this is a star. This is not just some girl down in the streets of Johannesburg. And this even, is a major star. And even regardless, Big, Blaze, yeah. yo, like that's just some weak, it's just something weak to do. Yeah, as men a man. are trash for this, man. You can't be uh, dating women and then being with them and starting to beat them. Like it really, mm -hmm. it just shows how weak you are. Like if, you, if your anger is going to get to a level where you cannot... Uh, discuss it uh, you know have a meeting and just sit mm -hmm. down and basically de deal with situations like mm -hmm. you know like a, a, a normal human being or yeah. walk away get yeah. out of the house take a drive or something go walk or, and I know I know, know this might sound that can help you you know yeah and I know this might sound um, crazy yeah. uh, for me to say it but you know some of these men who actually do this yeah 
they might need some sort of support group and not supporting like uh, encouraging that behavior yeah but i feel like there might be a sickness in their upbringing definitely with their with their something mentally about them might yeah. be off yeah you know it might be their connection with their parents and and how they came up Maybe. with the ladies yeah. in their life yeah so you know it's something that maybe needs to be addressed as well maybe when when they go to jail there has to be a program yeah people for, like this, for guys who are belong i hope they took him out they they outed him and and took him to jail for this this is mm-hmm. his words forget women speaking out and marching and stuff mm-hmm. when it comes to domestic violence what can women do nothing it's the men mm-hmm. who have to unite and protect our women and children you know after all we are we are the perpetrators and yeah. this is the tweet that he he sent out aka big up aka man that's something I'm with really him, strong. Yeah. we all need to stand up for our women we all need to come out i know people think uh that it's all about like women speaking out and trying to categorize women as as what they call it like uh, uh what they call it femi- feminists yeah. or, or trying to put them in a category but it's really all of us because these are our sisters mm-hmm. our mothers yeah. our aunties our grandmothers yeah. these are our friends don't you want them living well and walking around safe? Exactly. Why would you want to ever disrespect a woman? And when you see anybody hitting a lady, whether yeah. it's your dad, Come your out, brother, yeah. your friend, your whoever it is, you have to check them. You As have a man, to check them. you have to check them. Man, I've seen people, women get mistreated in matatus. I've had to stop a matatu mm-hmm. one day and be like, "Listen, you can't talk." Yeah, to a you woman can't like do that. this. And people get shocked because mm-hmm. they're thinking, "Why is it your business?" Mm-hmm. It's all our business. It's our business. Because women are the mothers of our nations, mm-hmm. you know. So big up, AKA, and he's really putting money where his mouth is. And last month he donated a million shillings. That's a hundred thousand mm-hmm. rand to the students. Um, was it stu- representative? representative um, Committee. committee of the University of Wits Watersrand. Which is what now? Wit Watersrand. I got you know. S- oh, you got some Dutch people out there in that Okay. South Africa is very Afrikaans. Uh-huh, okay. Wit Watersrand. <laughs> big up, big up, AKA. Um, uh, in sports, we've seen the the Wanyama family still flourishing. Wow. You know, Marcy uh, Wanyama made history after signing a contract in Spain. Big up uh, for playing basketball. Your Spain you know, is the, one of the countries that plays really good. Ball. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, right after the U.S., Spain, Italy, Spain, mm-hmm. Russia, China, and what other country? Uh, yeah, there's Spain and Italy in mm-hmm. Europe, man, mm-hmm. and Turkey. You'd be Turkey's surprised. Doing yeah, well? Turkey doing well. Turkey basketball. Well, you know, her, her siblings have also also done some major things in sports from McDonald Mariga, yeah. Victor Wanyama currently playing right? in the Premier League. Oh, the oh yeah, right? yeah, I see you. I see you. Man, you know <laughs> bring them out, man. So, bring so, them out to Nairobi Rhapsody. Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah. So shouts out to Masi Wanyama, and uh, we're gonna be looking. I'm paying. I'm paying close attention to to whatever she's got going on out there in Spain. We love it. that's legendary. We love it. Legendary. When do big things, you know. Mm-hmm. Keep she moving. Got a work permit and everything. Nice. Yeah. So she's fighting for a spot in the team now uh you know she just got in so now it's time this is when the work begins now she has to prove herself to be on that court every single time so congratulations big up mercy mm-hmm. we'll be watching you and cheering you on huh? yeah, yeah talking about sports manchester guy whoops uh, what this, happened man? this all happened in the span of a week i'm a big man united fan hey bro so tuesday night yeah we're going to paris two nil down Everyone is like, Man United is finished. Yeah. You're out of the Champions League. <laughs> Boom. We pull a miracle win. Miracle win. Last minute penalty and all that. Yeah. Like, like a movie, straight out of a movie. We go through. So going into the weekend facing Arsenal, you know, like confidence is high. Yeah. Everybody's relaxed. Uh, Arsenal's man. hungry. Uh, yeah. They, they were hungry. From the bottom. They were coming from a loss because they had just lost at the, the Europa League Thursday yeah. night. Yeah. So they were coming from a loss. We were coming from a win. I feel like you know they just were more hungry. They wanted it more, and they yeah, got it. They got it. But but I I did say we we're talking to my friends before the the Arsenal Man U game. I did say if there was any team that was gonna break our unbeaten run in the Premier League, it would probably be Arsenal. Just because history has a funny way yeah. of repeating itself. Yeah, you and guys when, know each other very well. And when Arsenal had their forty nil forty zero unbeaten run, yeah, Man United broke broke the the run so i was expecting them to break this run but not this soon big up to arsenal man yeah yeah i saw my man um uh eric omondi trying to give up his wife oh this. he lost his wife <laughs> did he give it up <laughs> joe mishiri got a <laughs> wife all of a sudden <laughs> Yo. yeah yeah you guys I, take it way too far man no nah, no nah, that's just social media for 
water so though. Good. It's so fun. It's so fun. <laughs> it's I so love, fun I love the games. fact that you know there's fun mm-hmm. after the game. Yeah. And, and you know it's sports. You know. Yeah. I'm sure Manuel will 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 get their day. Oh yeah. You know. We'll get our day too. Bless oh yeah. It. Bless oh yeah. It. Did you see that the UK museum? Uh. Uh. A return in a lock from the Emperor Theodros, the Ethiopian Emperor. First uh, of all, Theodros II. They, they need return to return in his his braid. They need to return a lot more. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. African history. African history has been lost to European museums, bro. Yeah. You they're know, all out there. Oh yeah. We're, we're there, man. You see artifacts. You're like, this is from Africa. Mm-hmm. We're they, not. We're not really connected to our pre-colonial times. Yeah. Our pre-colonial times They'll is in European it. museums, yeah. bro. It's ridiculous. I've seen them out there in Paris and yeah. Brussels, mm-hmm. big museum, big African sections of yeah. museums where yeah. you're like, wow, I never seen this in an African museum. Mm-hmm. So it's good that they're making that, you know, return of 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 uh, to, uh, Emperor Theodore's hair. Th- this, we need to use this whoever whoever can, the powers that be. We need to use this as a case of precedence yeah. to follow up on all the pre-colonial um, you know, African art that's not here. Keep bringing we them back. We need to. Yeah, they need to start bringing them back. We Yo, need them. <clears throat> guess what else is happening this this uh, this weekend? This weekend? Yeah. This What's happening? Week, this whole week. What's happening? South by Southwest. Oh, it's here already? And Kenya didn't make it, man. Yeah, man. We didn't make it. I'm supposed to be in South by this week, right? Yeah. I'm supposed to be in South by. But uh, we try to go out. We we look for the funding. We got people that promised money and 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 nobody gave one cent. I'm talking about like sixty thousand people are gonna be in Austin, Texas, this week. And this is because we couldn't find any support from yeah. Kenyan businesses, yeah. Kenyan Can, government. Nothing, zero, zilch. People just promising, promising. We'll do this. We'll do. It. It's like they don't understand the importance of taking your culture out there right now the eyes are on kenya you got calligraph you got king kaka you Do got you know, fee we got yo, Nama, we're taking a whole contingent of artists i know we got nothing back like people just looking at us like yeah 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 we'll support you we'll support yo, you do people understand the value of culture Sixty thousand people passing through Austin, Texas. I'm talking about bookers, uh, creatives. I'm talking about people who are into games. Like you can actually talk to the gamers, mm-hmm. or you talk to the people that create these games. Yo, sync for license music. Like, your music. If you really go well. It's a lot of networking. Oh yeah, yeah. I can't you know, believe festival this. Festival bookers. I'm talking about club bookers. I'm talking about uh, people, artist managers, managers, artists themselves. I mean, when I was there the other year, there was like everybody from. Who from Jay Z to Rihanna, like everybody comes in. I can't believe this. So if you want to meet everybody, this is the place to be. I can't believe the reason the Kenyan contingent isn't going is from lack of support from Kenyans. I can't believe it. I actually thought maybe there was an issue with South by. No, like we didn't get support at home. We got the stage. We were doing the African Caribbean stage. Everything was set. Everything was set. But. We couldn't get no funding, so I'm wondering, like, how do you, how else are you? And we're not looking for that much money. We Flights see, and we, accommodation. You see the amount of money that gets wasted in in in, in procurement and graft and and corruption. Oh. We were only asking for like fifty, sixty thousand dollars, and that's really just to take the artist there to showcase Kenya. And we were gonna carry the Kenyan flag. We we're oh, gonna have like man. a Kenyan booth. Nothing, man. We got no support. So y'all stealing billions, but you, oh man, it's really sad. But let's really listen. Next year is South by Southwest. The same time in March. Come on, I'm urging Kenyan companies, Kenyan authorities, please support your artists. They're not doing this because it's just really all they can do. They're doing this because they showcase our country to the world. Nigeria's getting in. South Africa is all the way in there. Why is Kenya missing out? And it's not like there's no money in Kenya. I just remembered something. And like this is low key pissing me off. Remember the World Cup in Russia? Yeah. And uh, at the, I think it was the semifinals and the finals. Yeah. And they send all the politicians and the you politicians see the, went. You see all the money that they spent. And you're like, okay, cool. So what did you? What showcase? value? Yeah. What yeah. value did, yeah. did did they bring back? Here we have artists that can really communicate good things about your country. Oh uh, yeah, and yeah. And you don't even support them. Like, who are we gonna be able to look up to? I mean, the few times that I've been to South by, it's always been supported by a South African company, an American company, but never a Kenyan organization. Yeah. It's like they don't see the value in promoting their own artists and this is why artists are dying broke because they don't get support 
They're dying with pain inside because they don't get support from their own companies. Companies that have millions and millions of dollars. Billions. They, you see them like splashing money on socialites and splashing money on things that don't even make any sense on, and crazy promotions. But you can't even support your own artists. I mean, listen, it's Kenya Airways. You can give out some free tickets. Come on, man. Like it's nothing. I bet That's you you flying to New York for f like empty. Yeah. We try to get to Kenya Airways. Nobody could get us in. Nothing. Safaricom. Nothing. Everybody just trying to block you or whatever like just people just not interested in supporting their own arts it's nah, really that's sad. not cool it's sixty thousand people in austin texas man come on that's not Let's cool get up. like all these companies can do it tusca yeah pilsna safaricom come on airtel you're making money in these countries man come on like support your arts oh yeah yo Get off that! Okay, we're back. We're back. We're back. We're, back. we're gonna get at? off that. On Who the we mad at? Podcast. Who man, we I'm, mad at? I'm so mad at people that don't have phone etiquette. Mm. You call a business, or you call you. You go to uh, you go online. You're looking for a service. You find a number. You call the business, mm -hmm. and the people on the other side of the line are acting like you're bothering them. Like, who, <laughs> like well, why did you put your number on 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 online then? Why are you acting like I started the business? You advertise the business. You put it online, uh -huh. so I'm calling that number. Why are you acting mad when I'm calling you? Like I want service, mm. and then you acting like I'm bothering you. Damn. Come on, get off that! Man. Get if you have a that. business and you want to make money, you're a public business. The reason why people create business is so they can give a service to the public. I'm the public. I'm calling your business. You're supposed to be nice mm. and give me direction on what I really want. Mm. Why are you acting like I'm bothering you? Mm. Get off that, man. <laughs> Don't be out here putting a business out and then expecting us to understand the problems that you've been through today. Yeah. Everybody been through a really tough day. That, that's none of my business. Come on, pick up the <laughs> phone and, and, and run your business. That's yeah. why you put it online. Mm. Get off that. Get man. off that. Get off that. <laughs> Rewind, 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 rewind. This is the section where you get to listen to all the music mm. that you might not hear over there, but you will hear right here. On, on the Blaze, Blaze Podcast. Podcast. Right? Who do we start with? Let's uh, go. We got T. How do you say your name? Tiziana. Tiziana. Who are you? Wow. Tiziana. Yeah. You are now in the zone. You don't know my Legs in this video. It's dope. It's nice, man. It's nice. <laughs> a lot of legs. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Shouts out to all the dope women out there. Big up all the women. We continue <clears throat> in the spirit of uh, International Women's Day. We're yeah, only yeah. playing female music this this particular this whole month. Rewind. Next is the producers pick. Let's yep. see what the producers have for us. What do they Let's have go. for us this week? Who this? Tuna Nash? From where? Tuna Nash is her name or the name of the song? Hey, yeah, 
careful Nigerian. I feel like I'm back at Africa Nouveau. Yeah. Hey. Right. French. What they say? You speak French. <laughs> She's mixing it up. Yeah. Sultry voice. Mm -hmm. Dig it. It's nice. Hey. Bedroom music. Mm -hmm. I see you getting in your bedroom bag. Hey. My man, my man, my man's about to go to sleep already. <laughs> Some good shit. We still can't find out where they're from? Okay. She could be either Haitian, hmm. Nigerian, Rondese, or, or Ethiopian or Congolese, but she got the French vibe. <clears throat> so I'm thinking Congo and mm -hmm. Haiti is in the vibes. What's her name? Turunesh. Let me get Turunesh. Avant-garde. Canadian. Damn, yeah, there was some Swahili there. Haraka Yanini. She's doing it all. Damn. Hey, hey, this music is vibes. Does she have an album out or something? Hey, I'm gonna check out her album for sure. Dope, Shout dope, out. dope. Really dope, man. Big up, big up. Uh, oh, yeah. Nash, oh, Canadian, yeah. Canadian, and um, doing her thing. What you, what you giving her out of five? I'm definitely giving her a uh, five. Huh? For the music that she's making. Oh, five, yeah. Five. She's getting definitely a five. I'm with she's you. I'll definitely look her up. I want to listen to that kind of music. I'm trying to I get need an that album. music in my heart. Oh, man, yeah. In my vibe. Oh, yeah. Music in my soul. So Great that music. Was, uh, that was uh, our version mm. of rewind mm -hmm. on this episode right here man this is where you get to listen to all the music that you'll never yeah. hear elsewhere but you listen to it right here on the blaze podcast you're catching us every thursday on blaze tv what's good networks and of course afropods afropods right. that dial. so uh this week on three tips uh let's try to talk about running a night an event a festival whatever it may be we've got three tips for you First tip is to identify your niche. By niche, I mean the people who you would like to attend your event. Are they hip-hop lovers, reggae lovers, are they R&B guys? Or do they listen to a little bit of everything? Are you trying to get a mixture of people? Whatever it, 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 it is that you're trying to do, once you identify what your niche is, that's how it can be consistent with your messaging. Once you once you know exactly this is the type of person I'm lo I'm looking for, you can know how to message your your campaigns, uh, your flyers, your whether marketing. it's radio, TV, yeah. or marketing. Yeah. Should be all built around that particular niche community that you're targeting. And it's always dope to have niche because when you when you shoot for everybody, you might get some people mixed reactions yeah some people might be like nah yeah it's not you for might me. get mixed reactions yeah all right the second thing would be to identify a venue 
that's also consistent. That's a big issue, especially in Nairobi. With, yeah. Venues are scarce. Mm -hmm. And you should get a venue that is easily accessible to your niche community that you're reaching out to. So, And looking at the venue, of course, security yeah. is, a, is, a, is a big thing to look at. Um, uh, you know, uh, accessibility, like I said, whether the mats, you know, if you can get mats that are passing by there, it's way better. Yeah. And, uh, public transportation. Public transportation. And uh, having cabs around the venue is also, uh, you know, a very good thing. You can have people coming in and out easier. So, yeah, a, a dope venue that has all those key necessities, security, transport, and accessibility. And the third tip would be... Pricing. Pricing. Yeah, man. It's all about the moolah. The money. Yeah, man. Are those people I willing to much, spend? How eh? much? How much? How much? How many How much? <laughs> <laughs> That's four beers, man. Yeah. Beer, hey. <laughs> how much? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, man. Um, I, I don't know if we have bodies that, that, that do that kind of research to... It's coming up. You know, to find it's out, um, you know, we're what do they call it? Lifestyle... We've, we're forming an association of promoters mm -hmm. who will come out with like levels mm -hmm. where a certain event cannot charge a certain price. Mm. You know? It's got to be on a level like, what am I getting if I pay a thousand shillings yeah. or I pay? Yeah, we know, need 15, to standardize. Yeah, it's coming. We need to standardize. It, yeah, it's coming. So standardization is key. Yeah. So you know, if you're trying to do a good event, make sure you consult about pricing uh, to figure out, you know, the people you're looking at, you're looking to come to your event. Yeah. At what price point will they be most comfortable uh, to pull up? That's it. That's three tips for my yeah. man, Jinx. Yeah, yeah. That's how we do it, man. And we're talking about events. Go out there every 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 other uh, Wednesday. Wednesday. We got lyrics and bottles oh, man. of Onyx, you know. Oh, man. Steph Capella. Lyrics and bottles with Steph was a Steph movie. Steph was the main. Oh, yeah, yeah. You came through? That was a I good party. Oh, uh, dog, what I you mean? I see, nah, that was, you were not plastered? I was, I was creeping out. Nah, B. Out. <laughs> we actually kicked it. Word? Are you serious? I was, we was out there I with Long John. The other one, yes, and, uh, yes. That oh, was man. the night. Yeah, that was the night. It was a great night, man. Every Wednesday night, Onyx. Yeah, and of course, March twenty second, tribute to Kantai. Oh yeah, and MC Sharon launching gems. See you there, yo! Big up, big up to our watchers and listeners, our supporters, and the people that make this podcast go on. You've been watching the Blaze Podcast. Keep watching. Subscribe on Buddha Blaze TV. Watch on What's Good Networks mm -hmm. and keep listening on AfriPods. Yeah, yeah. The Blaze Podcast. I appreciate you a whole lot. See you next week. Salute. The hottest thing Blaze in the world right now. Blaze. This is The Blaze Podcast.